Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. This is Chrissy. I am an animal trainer and behaviorist and executive director of Elefation. We are a nonprofit that offers consultation to elephant organizations all over the world who are interested in learning how to utilize positive reinforcement and protected contact as a kinder and more effective way of training elephants primarily to participate in their medical care. A couple of years ago, I got to spend a few months at Zimbabwe Elephant Nursery. They are a wonderful organization in Zimbabwe, modeled after the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. So they rescue orphaned elephant calves whose mothers have been killed by poachers for the ivory trade or other such human interference. These photos were actually taken a couple of years ago, so the elephants in these pictures and in the video clip are actually currently in the process of being reintroduced back into the wild. Uh, so when they are very young and they're being uh, rehabilitated while they're healing and while they're still milk dependent, they live at the nursery with their keepers who act as surrogate mothers. And when they're ready, they'll begin the process of being introduced to wild elephant herds. So while they're at the nursery, we do need a safe and effective way to provide medical care. So things like foot care, blood draws, uh, rectal exams, injections, uh, treating any injuries or wounds that they may have. Uh, these are all uh, things that we need to do uh, for their uh, health and well-being. But as you can imagine, all of those procedures I just listed don't sound very pleasant. Uh, they, they would be very uh, scary and stressful to the elephants. The elephants in these pictures are between the ages of two and five years old, but you can see they are pretty big. So if they were to get scared and stressed, they could quite easily uh, injure or hurt their keepers and the veterinarian. So protected contact offers a really nice solution. So protected contact means there is a barrier between the elephant and the keepers. And the elephants learn to participate in these medical procedures on a voluntary basis, meaning that they choose to participate. So if they don't like what's going on, they are free to walk away without the fear of any kind of punishment. But through a process of slow desensitization and pairing it with food rewards, the elephants learn to not only tolerate the procedures, but they learn to actually look forward to it. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So, this is Fidelis, elephant keeper and trainer extraordinaire, and Kura. Kura is a five year old bull. They have a really wonderful relationship. You can see that we have modified the elephant's night corral for our training purposes. During the day, the elephants will head out into the bush with their keepers to learn how to be wild elephants, but at night, they come back and sleep in this corral. So that training session is actually taking place at about 6 o'clock in the morning before the elephants head out for the day. So a quick explanation before we proceed. What you just saw there was Fidelis practice what we call an ear present, and that is for a voluntary blood draw. It, that is a very important behavior. Blood is taken from behind the ear. There's a large vet network of veins and arteries, and it's also where the skin is thinnest. So Cora did a really nice job with that, but in the next clip, we are going to be turning Kura around and beginning the desensitization process on his left side. Elephants are like us in that they tend to be uh, right or left-handed, so to speak. Uh, they have a side that they are stronger and more coordinated on. So Kura is definitely stronger on his right side, but we want him comfortable with us performing procedures on both sides. So we'll be turning him around and practicing on that side that he is not quite as comfortable on. 
We're going to be practicing a voluntary blood draw, getting a heart rate, and looking into Cora's eyes. So these are all procedures that the veterinarian who works there requested because he needs to be able to do these in order to get a basic health assessment on the elephants. Another part of the desensitization process will be me. I will be in the next clip, and I am going to be acting as veterinarian. So Cora knows, loves, trusts Fidelis completely, but he doesn't know me very well and still isn't quite sure if he can trust me. Uh, so Fidelis is going to be teaching Cora hey, uh, this weirdo is going to be coming up and poking and prodding you, but stick with me. I've got your back and there are food rewards in it for you. So again, we are beginning the desensitization process. So all of these procedures will be short and quick. We want to start off that way and build on that. So let's get started. Adelis is turning Kura around so we can begin the descent process on his left side. You can see that there is a specific point in the fence where we'd like the elephants to stand so we can get access to that ear. So Fidelis is asking Cora to follow him down to the end of the fence there so we can get him in the spot where we would like him. Here Fidelis is using a target pole to ask Kura to bring his bum into the side there. Uh, Kura has learned to touch different parts of his body to that target pole. So that's how Fidelis communicates to him that he wants him standing against the fence. And Kura did really well, so Fidelis is giving him a reward for that. Now there is me. I once again am going to be playing vet today. So Fidelis is going to ask Kura for his ear. And here I begin with some touching and I am pulling out an alcohol swab. So we are not taking a blood today. We're just practicing, but a veterinarian would clean the area off first with alcohol. So we're getting Kura used to the feel and smell of that. And next, you can't see it very well, but I am pulling out this pokey piece of plastic. Obviously, when we go to actually take a blood, the needle is going to sting. So I am actually introducing uh, some desensitization there. I'm actually poking him, and we do actually want it to hurt a little bit. So you can see there was tension in that ear. Kura wasn't crazy about it, but he did choose to stay. So we're giving him a treat for that. Uh, both Fidelis and myself are saying, hey, we know that that isn't fun, but thank you for staying and allowing us to do that. Next, we are going to be practicing a heart rate. <laughs> so here you can see Cora says, what is that cold piece of metal? which is fine. Uh, Fidelis, as you can see, does not get angry or upset. He's going to ask him to bring that side back in. And K Kura still isn't quite sure, so Fidelis is going to use the target pole as a little bit of a reminder. There we go. So Kura's, Kura came back into the fence there. We're going to go back into what we were doing before, and now he's doing really, really well. Obviously, that's not where the heart is. I'll start on the outside of his body where he's more comfortable and kind of slowly move into those areas that are a little bit more sensitive. And Kura is doing so well with that right now that Fidelis is giving him uh, lots of rewards. And we'll keep it short and quick and end on a good note. So here I'm just doing some touching, getting Kura used to a stranger touching him around his uh, ears and face. And here we're going to practice uh, looking into his eye. So I'm putting my hand close to his eye and actually physically holding the eye open like that. So Cora did really, really well. Obviously, we would eventually want the eye in a better position where you can see it better. Uh, but once again, we're just starting. So we're starting off uh, easy and pairing those procedures with food rewards. So both Kura, the elephant, and Fidelis, his keeper and trainer, did an excellent job with that. So there you have it, the wonderful keepers at Zimbabwe Elephant Nursery. Uh, Fidelis was able to build on those procedures and get Kura completely comfortable with that. 
and he did it all without the use of any kind of force or threats or restraints of any kind. So, if you are traveling in Africa, I highly, highly recommend Zimbabwe. The country is absolutely beautiful. The people there make it even more beautiful. And if you're in Zimbabwe, I highly recommend visiting Zimbabwe Elephant Nursery. If you would like to support Elephation and the work we do, we would be ever so grateful. I will include the link to our website in the fields below. And if you are interested in learning more about and supporting Zimbabwe Elephant Nursery, I will include that link also. They are a truly wonderful organization. You will not be disappointed. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Stay tuned for more videos, and we'll see you next time. Bye!